Yeah. So Desmos is a web-based graphing calculator that has many wonderful features. So all we have to do is go to desmos.com. This is also an app that you can download for the iPhone. This is an app for the iPad. Or you can just use a web-based version and go to launch calculator. So www.desmos.com. And then we are going to launch the calculator. So we collected different pullback distances. And those are our dependent variable, independent variables. Excuse me. So we're going to change the 1 to a 2. We did three different trials with 2. So two, two, two. You did three different trials with four. You did three different trials with six. So we're just entering those numbers in for x. And then in the y, you are going to input your data that you collected for how the distance that it traveled. So if I were to say we collected six, nine, and 10, those will show up on the calculator. So at this point, I will help you individually. If you have questions, ask a table mate, a group partner. And then once we get our data collected, I will show you what to do next. We're not competition ready, obviously. But what I'm asking is that we turn our voices into a place where those who would like to follow along and listen and hear how to use Desmos, because you haven't had experience with Desmos, can do so. And if you're comfortable and you're ready to keep working, that's fine with me. I totally understand we're at different levels in our uh, experience and exposure to Desmos. So I made up some data. And I'm, this is what I'm going to model. Hopefully this doesn't match your cars because I tried to make it look a little differently. So if you see like this isn't what mine looks like, I specifically chose different numbers. Well, all the cars are different and yes, that's you. So you notice I don't see anything happening. That's mainly because we need to change our view. So we are going to go over, you have these zoom buttons so you can zoom in and zoom out but if I zoom out it zooms everything at the same time and so maybe you want to be a little more specific in how you look at your graph so you can click the wrench and specifically change so I know my pullback distances were between 0 and 10 so I might change my x values to maybe like a negative 10 and a 30 so I can have a more specific window. And then we know our y values were the distance, distance, distances. So maybe we go from negative 10 to, let's say, 200. And that gives me a more specific window. And I can always move it around How did you change and you change know, that. So the wrench in the right hand corner. My step is 10. Can somebody tell me what that means? The yeah, intervals. And so you can change all of these views of your graph based upon what's going to help you analyze your data. And I just pick numbers looking at my data table. So that way, what I collected is what I see. And since my x values were the pullback values, I made those smaller, and the y was the distance traveled, and I wanted it to be able to go and see a little more, so I made my y values a little different. And that's why the steps are different, because in a square, we're trying to fit 0 to 30, and then 0 to And then what do you click after you're done?
just click out of that and it'll make it happen. Is it going to save it? If you just click out, yes. If you hit enter, I hit enter. Enter works too. Can you color the dots differently? Yes. Let's go look at the top. Yes. Hmm, what color are dots? Mine are purple. Purple. Well, what else? Mine are green. What else is green? The circle, the circle under Y1. So let's just click that. Oh, they went away. So click on the click on the gear key, and if you want to change color, you know, this yeah, oh, click I on this gear key, oh, yeah, yeah. and then click the on the circle, like and then you can change this color and style, and then if you're done, click done. Thank you, Cynthia. So, what? pattern are you seeing on your computers? What does it look like? Increase. The further we pull back, the further distance. The further distance. What shape is your graph? Kind of a stair step. A very steep. It's not a straight line. It's not exactly straight. Yes. No, but it's a positive slope. It's a positive slope? So. We're going to pause as students and put on our teacher hats right now. We're going to pause as students and put on our teacher hats. This activity is really wonderful because of the, the range of activities we can do with this. And so the, ra the range of grades this hits. So we, if we were to collect more data, this line would be a curve. But because I specifically chose smaller numbers, those, that's the steep part of the quadratic. And so we can model those smaller numbers linear with a line. So if you work with lines, you can do this activity and focus on the smaller numbers, and you can make it a line. If you are in the high school grades, you can do bigger numbers and have them see the, like decide, well, is this a line? Is this a curve? So this is one reason I thought this was a great When you click in that box, it'll bring up numbers and variables. So again, we're going to scroll down below the table, click into the box, and that'll give us some numbers. The background information your students need to have is y equals mx plus b, so that way they can try to draw a line that matches this line. And so Desmos, you can just type on your keyboard y equals, and you can just, when I'm modeling this with students, I just pick any slope. So I ask somebody their favorite number. 17. So, 17. so we're just going to try 17x. So again, teacher hats. What skills do we want our students to practice? What is your goal? And that's going to decide how you have the students work within Desmos. If you want them to work on the sliders and play with the sliders, great. If you think, oh my gosh, this is going to confuse my students even more, then you don't have to do the sliders. So think about your own students and what is going to make this a useful tool for your own students. So if you want these sliders, as I change the B, the y-intercept changes, and as I change the M, my slope changes. So what, what do we want to happen when we're drawing a line? What do you mean by catch? Can you be a little more specific it, there, please? That, it, that the line is within the range of data, not exactly on all the data, but it's like a trend line. Best fit. Best fit. And so can you exp what makes it a best fit? It, it hits most of the data. Most of the points? Same amount of points on the top and as the bottom? Uh, 
Well, maybe. Yeah. Oh, there is a there is a line of best fit a formula, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I wasn't going to go there today, but we can. And so, well, I think you want the, if you want to see the trend, you want the dots close between, um, dots on both sides and pretty close to the line. Pretty close to the line, yes. Not just equally to both sides. Yeah. So before I give you the formula for finding the line of best fit, I want you to play around and come up with an equation that you think models your data accurately. And you can either do that by creating the sliders or if you just want to type in numbers, you can make these numbers and say like 10x plus 3 and then we can see that line there and then if I change the 10 to a 20 it'll also change the line and we can see that change happening with this orange line and again if you don't like orange you can go up to the you can change the colors also So, we have discussed how this will calculate the line of best fit. So maybe we think our line's pretty good, but this is a competition. We want to win at this competition. So we want that best line. And so Desmos will calculate that for us. I'm just going to click this equation that I had created to hide it, and I'm going to click in a new box down here. So we're going to type in Y, and if we, you don't need to scroll up, but my Y values are labeled Y1, so I need to type in a 1 to connect it to my table. And Desmos, senses that we, when I type a 1 next to a variable, it'll make it a subscript automatically. So you don't need to do anything special except type Y and 1, and it automatically makes it a subscript. And then we're not going to put an equal sign because it's not an equation. We are going to do the tilde, which is shift, and then the button to the left of 1. So shift and the button to the left of 1, which is the tilde. And then we need an M for slope. Can I just ask you how you got that field right there? Clicking below any, any blank space. And we want to connect our X's to the table. So what should I type? X1. X1. And then we type plus B. How did you do on your equations? Thumbs up. So, so? All right. So I would use this equation because with the mathematics, this is what fits your data best. Okay, so this equation So now, you need to know your competition distances in order to do the next couple of calculations. Because I'm going to give you the y value, the distance, and you're trying to figure out the x value, how far you, far you need to pull it back in order to hit that y value. And if I gave you all the same distance, wouldn't make our competition that fair, because the people who go first, everybody can learn from them. So that's why you all get different distances, and you're aiming for a different end number. Any other questions on where we are? At now you should have an equation for the line of best fit. And you can write that equation in your, on your paper. All right. So 
I would love to help you one more. Here are your competition distances. Please write this for question number six. Whatever group you are, this is your competition distance in inches. Competition distance in inches. And I'm going to give your group five minutes to do calculations. One thing I forgot to mention in, as a teacher, I did this activity, bought the cars, I was so excited, and it took me two days. And I, at the end of the first day, the kids were like, well, do I get to use the same car the next day? And so we had to t spend the last couple minutes frantically numbering the cars. So if you are going to do anything like this, I highly suggest numbering the cars, so that way you, kids know which one they used, and then you get to use that same car in the competition because you know how that car works. Yes? In the competition, the one closest is the absolute value. Doesn't matter above or below. Yeah. All right. So I think we are all ready. We are going to travel downstairs, and there's a nice big open space. Stephen is going to be our measuring guru, and he's going to be in charge of measuring. And we are just going to go in order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, because they're all different distances. So we're all aiming for something different. Okay. So then are we aiming closest to our set distance, or like way from our set distance? Closest to your set distance. You're, you're aiming to hit this number. Do we have to use the number we found on the graph, or see well, hopefully the number on the graph is what's going to make it actually do that. That's the, the hope. Same. This carpet, not the... The inside. It's the inside. They're already downstairs. Okay. Please follow me downstairs.